Hey voters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to put the thermostats in, the poppet valves in the springs. This is a tricky setup to get these in here. It's probably the only thing that I would say is not fun. Well, it's work, right? It's all work, but I love these V4 cross-flow motors. It's a 90 horsepower Johnson. It's probably a 1995, maybe a 93, somewhere around that range. The model number's gone off of it, so I can't look it up. I could look up different things to see, but we've got this all cleaned up and ready to go. And I'm going to show you how these go in. Don't forget my used outboard motor buying guides for sale on Amazon now for $20. I'm still offering for a limited time a free session over the phone for a half an hour, a $250 value if you buy my guide and send me an email at keithatoutboarddad.com with proof of purchase. So let me show you in the book first, and then we'll line this all up together. So again, what's great about having these manuals is you can really reference them and look at how this all goes together. So if you look at this closely, you can see how the poppet valve springs go in, where the gaskets go for the thermostats themselves to make sure it's put in properly. So, and it also gives you some nice real life pictures too. This is a original Johnson Evinrude manual, uh, 1988. So we've got the cover that kind of house the housing, whatever we want to call that, all nice and cleaned up now. We cleaned out all the holes so it's nice and clean. Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. I did scrape the gaskets off and sand that a little bit too and sprayed it with some great brake cleaner. So here's our mid part with our poppet valves. There is a rubber ring that's in here. There's nothing wrong with it and they're not binding in there. And then our thermostats, if you see, they have a little cork gasket in there and they only go in one way. There is a little ring here, but it's not on the other side, so you can't screw it up. Well, I guess you could screw up anything if you want to. So we sanded this, made sure all these surfaces were clean. There is a gasket on this side and a gasket on the other side. And let me show you how the housing goes on first. So it's pretty straightforward. This is where our two springs, which we have them inside here now. We'll show you that next. And then this goes on this way with our bolts. So we're going to hold this in this position. We're going to have to hold this together and then put it on there holding that. So a little trick I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little weather stripping adhesive and I'm going to put it on either side of this cork gasket so that these thermostats don't fall out while we're doing it. I've wrestled with them many times before not doing that. It's just the easiest way. I'm just going to put just enough so they stick and hold in there. And we have to be careful as we're fumbling around, we could break it loose. So we're going to take our time. So let me set up my camera so you can see inside here and then we'll get this stuck together with the gaskets on it with a little bit of sealer and then we'll put it together. Okay, you can see we have our two springs in here now ready to go. We cleaned up this surface. I'm going to do a thin layer. I'm going to spread this out really thin. Put, our, put my gasket on this, then put a thin layer on the, on the other side, put our piece in, put a thin layer on that gasket so it's ready to go, and then we're going to feed this in here with the bolts. I, I have a really thin layer of grease on all of these bolts, including the holes and including the, the shaft of the bolts so that they'll come out better next time. Okay, so a thin layer on both sides of this gasket. Now I'm going to go ahead and take our assembly here you see I have my thermostats just stuck on with a little bit of weather stripping adhesive, but my poppet valves are nice and loose. And we're going to put this together here. Now I'm going to put a thin layer up here on both sides of this gasket, and then we'll put this together. It's going to be tricky because we have to push the springs, compress the springs, while we're trying to get the bolts started. We want to be very careful. See, I have it very thin. We want to make sure these stay free. We don't want to block them up at all. We also don't want to make sure we get silicone on the thermostats we want them to open. Now you'll see it's kind of risen up a little bit here, but that will pinch down because remember there's a cork gasket in there that will compress. So now let's get the bolts in here and we'll weasel this thing in. Okay, I got my bolts in here as you can see. Now they may fall out a little bit, but I have to get this in here. I have to get my springs on my poppet valves. So that's where it can get a little tricky. I yep, already lost the poppet valve because they need to stay nice and loose, so I'm glad it's not stuck in there with any excess sealer. So we're going to get that one first in there. Now we'll reach in here trying not to touch the sealer. Get the next one lined up. And now they're lined up. Now we're just going to push this in. Piece of cake, right? 
Now I'm going to compress the springs while I tighten the bolts. So I'm going to try and start with the center one. Yeah, you can't see. I'm sorry my arm is in the way. I'll definitely move the camera once I get this center one started. Probably could have had a little ratchet here. Might have been helpful. So I got the first one started in the middle. So let's get that in enough so that it will hold. All right, so you can see here, I have this one started now. I'm not going to go too crazy, but I'm going to get it close. And I can only turn a little bit. Now I have the bolt over here and a bolt over here I have to work into place. If we can get this in here. All right, it's lined up, which is good. And I am actually turning it with my fingers. I probably should have pulled this wire out of here because that's in my way. It's not in my way for this one. So let me get these two pretty close. I am able to turn it. This is why it's key to clean out those threads really good. Don't get a lot of turns. You know, you only get like a quarter turn because of the way it's shaped, but... And I'm sure some other technicians have some fancier stubby sockets and tools and stuff that they could get in here with. But I like to use the tools I have. I'm not a big fancy tool purchaser. Again, I'm only getting a little bit each time. But it does turn nicely because we cleaned out all those threads wire wheeled off all the bolts and also a nice thin layer of grease on everything. Alright, so these two, now we know it's lined up nicely. We'll get these two cranked in a little bit. See how I'm only getting like a quarter turn each time. Okay, we're getting real close now. Now we'll get this last bolt and it's Turning nicely too, thank you Jesus. We'll be able to get the wire out of the way so we can get the wrench in there. Okay. okay. So now all we need to do is tighten up one, two, three bolts. And then we're going to clean this up on the outside a little bit on these twos. We have this clean and then we'll get our hoses on. Okay, so we got that nice and tight, good and tight. Now we have these hoses here that are going to go in place. I'm going to move my spark plug wire out of the way. We do need to clean this up a little bit, but just so you have a demonstration, we'll go ahead and put these two hoses on with their clamps. One goes on each side. I did clean the inside with my famous pipe cleaners and made sure that was nice and clean. We'll clean the outside of the heads just to make sure they're ready to go. We'll put the clamps on here, and then we'll be ready to fire this motor up, probably tomorrow or the next day. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and let me know what you think the value of this motor is. Have a great day.